So here's uh, question number three. So question number three is, the contractor is about to place the concrete for a complicated but important structural wall, but something seems a bit off and you are worried. Which concrete test would you look at first for reassurance? And then we have a couple different answers. We have a uh, hydration test, core test, slump cone test, cylinder tests, and penetration test. So the key thing here when you're reading this question is that time seems of the essence, that there's something's wrong and you, before things get too set in place, you want to like, is some, do things, are things going reasonably correct? So a couple things we can do right off the bat is we can get rid of a few of these choices. So one that we can get rid of is A, because hydration test, I just made up. Uh, so that's, that's not a real thing. Uh, maybe it's a real thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe it is. A, I don't, but I, I made it up either way. Um, uh, and then core test and penetration test, those are things that you would do down the road. Yeah, uh, like the core test would be something you do on an existing structure to figure out what your strength of concrete might be. Right. That'd be like one way to do it. there was something that was going wrong and you wanted to, t to test it out. Or maybe it's an existing building and you're trying to see, can you add more load to mm -hmm. it or something? Right. So the core test is a, is a real thing, but it's just not something you would do in the, in the way that the question was described. And uh, I think the penetration test is sort of a similar thing. So the, really the, the two that are the, the sort of main ones that you're likely to be asked about would be the slump cone test and the cylinder test. And the slump, to, co, slump cone test is where you just have this sort of uh, cone-shaped uh, formwork piece and it's about 12 inches tall and you put a bunch of, of the concrete from – a particular uh, truckload that's coming in, that's about to go into place. And then you flip the cone over and you lift the, the, the cone off and you just sort of see how much does it slump down. So if it had a big slump and it like puddled, let's say it slumped down 10 inches or something, that means it's probably way too watery. And it, it's, uh, it's going to have cracking problems. Mm -hmm. It's going to have um, uh, sort of the, the capacity is going to be lowered. Or let's say it didn't slump at all. Let's say you're on a job site uh, and it had a zero slump. Well, the problem with that's going to be it's going to be hard to get any of that like in and around the rebar. It's right. going to be hard to get it uh, to you know between the rebar and the formwork. Or if you have a complicated uh, uh, formwork setup, which this question specifically says, a zero slump would be very very difficult in that situation. There are places where zero slump is quite useful and happens all the time, for example, in precast, where you have a lot more control over how it's being placed. But this is an on, uh, on-site uh, kind of question. So the slump seems like it's telling us quite a bit and it's telling it to us right away. So that's one possible answer. How about the cylinder test? So on well, the cylinder test, what happens? Yeah, so these are um, little, a lot of times they're plastic cylinders that they'll just scoop some of the concrete out as you're pouring it into these and they're supposed to let them cure on site so that they match what the concrete is out in the actual form. Um, but these are usually broken at 7 and 28 days. So if you're going to know anything, you're going to have to wait for 7 and 28 days. So if you're needing immediate answers, the cylinder test isn't going to give them to you. Yeah, because they're they're trying to. I mean, what happens with most cylinders that get done on a on a job site is they get put. Uh, they're supposed to cure in the same place um, so that you get the same climatic conditions. Uh, but eventually, they just get put into a basement somewhere and labeled. And you know, a year later, somebody throws them out. Um, actually, probably nobody throws them out because they're big and heavy. And like, why would you want to do that? Uh, and so they just sit there forever. Um, so they're they're not really used. But they are very useful if something has gone wrong and you're going back to check, like, wait a minute, so there seems like there's a problem, therefore let's check uh, the trucks five through seven that, that had their load that went to this one wall and you can go back, find the label, and then you literally smash them and that gives you an opportunity to check that, uh, like what kind, of, uh, what kind of pressure it took to smash that and therefore you know what happened. Well, that's great. But that's, as Heather says, that's, that's 28 days later, mm -hmm. maybe seven days later. Like you might do an early test because you can get a pretty good sense of it, but it's probably way later. So the way the question was worded, it's talking about, I'm worried. I, I want to find out what's going on. Uh, the slump test is definitely a more useful, useful one for you in that context. And I can guarantee you there'll be questions about slump tests and cylinder tests somewhere. I'm not sure how it'll be worded, but there'll be something because it's kind of a key one. Mm -hmm.